<laughs> you can hear the world roaring. There's the lake. I was going to actually do this down near the water, but with the wind and the waves, all you would hear is wind and waves. And so I'm out here roving two different style tips, field point, and then a, a stone tip. If I was to say that I'm out here roving, if I had the opportunity to, to score a squirrel or a rabbit, I just might, but that's not something that I would put on a video. It's just my thing, no moral judgments, but it's not my thing to like uh, take a creature and then you know parade them as far as like uh, look at me kind of a thing. No moral judgments to each is his own, it's just not my thing. So I am first gonna say that yes, I did finish one of those paddle bows up there without rawhide. I mean, I had to. I don't have a personal paddle bow, so I thought, you know, I'm gonna take this one and do it in my crest, a time-honored John tradition of paddle bowery, because keep in mind, they were not originally designed to be backed. They were designed um, to be good functioning self bows. I rawhide back just to add a little bit more security, plus it's a beautiful painting surface. Um, so that's what that is. I actually did a 29 bit, minute video where I'm taking the raw bow after I finished it with 400 grit, up to 400 grit, and then marked it, pressed it with dye, applied the darkening oil, and then over the heated surface of my electric range rubbed grease and a mixture of grease and, and beeswax into it for water protection. Made the string, added furry string silencers. I have to be, <coughs> the interest of full disclosure, no leather handle, so these, at this point, without any, without any substance to cushion the, the, the um, shaft against the handle, you know, they're, they're just for looks, but I could always cushion it with maybe a little bit of leather or something there over the arrow pass. That is that. If you want me to upload the 29 minute video, I'm not going to say that the excitement factor is right up there with X Games, you know, because I'm going about my business marking the distances, nine inches by the way, and then four inches, four and a half, and then four and a half, four and a half for the spots. Um, so I'll leave that up to you if you want to see it. I'm out here, yeah, it's winter and I'm in shorts and it could be considered blustery, but I rem reminded, <laughs> sound like Barney Fife, I am reminded of the time for, I think it was three years, I worked on a, a trail on the Grand River in Jackson County and also did river cleanup in canoes, in a single canoe. In, in the winter when my crew was gone, I worked alone, I would be out there year round on the river. Um, with an outboard, a side mounted outboard engine on my, my canoe, cleaning log jams, you know, there's nothing more unnatural yet exciting to use a chainsaw in the water. It's fun stuff. But I'm reminded of one February day, it was uh, zero degrees. It was zero degrees February, I'm out there with my, my, my canoe, and uh, the motor stopped and what happened was the impeller froze in the cooling system and it, it broke. And so the motor, yeah. And without thinking, you know, I, I kind of stood up. I'm good in a canoe, I've got lots of miles in it. This was just like a lapse in judgment which happens. I'm, I was 45 minutes from where I entered the river. I was in the middle of basically just, you know, wilderness, nowhere to use a vernacular. And when I went back there, I flipped the canoe. Shoo! Life jacket went floating away. You know, I didn't wear a life jacket. Um, the paddle went floating away. I'm in a winter coat in packs, big boots, gloves. And I went in the river and swam to the bank. And I'm sitting there underneath the tree watching the canoe drift away. 100% submerged, zero degree day, February. My outer um, clothing froze solid and I'm sitting there. Oh, by the way, just to show you my priorities were set. You know, I had every idea that I was gonna die that day. But when I swam to shore, I quickly took my Copenhagen out of my pocket and held it up as I paddled to shore. Because by gosh, um, I'm gonna die, but at least I'm not gonna die without a chew. And so I'm sitting there under the tree 
You know, and I, I passed the shivering point. If I had a, a method that I would say, this is a good way to die, um, freezing to death is, is actually really nice because I passed the, 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 the point where my body was shaking and shivering and suddenly I felt warm and I felt at peace. There was a certain euphoria that came over me and I'm thinking, I wonder how long it's gonna be, you know, sitting there partaking in my Copenhagen the last dip of my lifetime. You know, it's funny, because after a while, when I'm just kind of sitting around at peace with everything, this is kind of nice. At one with the cold, I heard a voice. And it was just like that that scene in, in Bambi. I don't think that Bambi has been, like, um, deemed uh, offensive and then eliminated because it offends people at this point in time. It might still be out there for your viewing pleasure. There's a sign when his, his father, the king of the forest, um, Bambi, get up. And I heard that, you know, John, but it wasn't as delicate as this Disney movie. I heard this voice say, John, get off your ass, get back in that river, and get your canoe, get the hell out of here. And so it's like, who am I to like disagree with the mysterious voice? And so I dove back into the river and I swam <laughs> as best you can, you know, in big winter boots, a winter coat, um, zero degree day on the Grand River. I swam, 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 got my paddle, got my canoe, was able to get into it. I'm tricky. I can, I can take a flip canoe and get into it in the water. I did that, and paddled, paddled. It took me a long time to get my car, put everything away because I'm that kind of person. Put the canoe back on, didn't just run off to civilization, and went straight to a 7-Eleven and bought a big bag of combos and two giant cups of coffee. And I, I remember the guy at the counter. It's he's like, man, you look like you just went swimming. And I'm like, yep, I did. And the funny thing was, I didn't even get a cold. <coughs> didn't even get a snuffle, so that's good. Which leads me into part three. Uno, dos, tres. In my my mornings, I'll click on YouTube and see what's happen happening in the world. And I listen to this guy, as I do, Sticks and Hammer 666. Brilliant. This guy is totally brilliant. And discuss the notion that, you know, the best thing we can do is, is start propping up India's economy. Pay a few cents more for um, these lower cost goods that are coming in and, and send our, our business to India. And he had a, a great, great um, theory on that, you know. Uh, but that aside, then I went to this thing that's, the, the, I'm trying to think of the name of it. it was John Oliver, but anyway, they sent, this woman out, and it was like, can liberal preppers survive the apocalypse? And they had this guy in the West, you know, a typical, you know, um, good with his guns, former military kind of a survivalist. Um, and then contrasted it with this guy, I don't know who he was, they called him Kung Fu Panda, that he doesn't like guns, so he has a katana, but he hasn't been trained in the katana, and he showed his survival pack. Then I went off and watched, um, well, the same video, then the the woman who was doing this, comedic but, you know, valid, went to uh, a store in Hollywood and believe it or not, Ben Affleck is actually like um, a purchaser of this thing. They had survival bug out bags for sale like on Rodeo Drive. I think they were in Gucci bags. It was so funny. They included, what did they include? They included a bottle of champagne in a blacked out bottle. I suppose you can chip arrowheads out of the bottle after your your um, mid-morning soiree. They also had caviar and a bunch of other useless stuff. So what does that have to do with me standing out in the woods with the roaring lake in the back? Cat food. Oh my gosh, I just went off on another tangent. You remember that scene in Mad Max? By the way, my son Max is named after Max. <laughs> I have to admit. Um, He's up there with his dog, up on a butte, and he's eating out a, a, a can of dog food. And it's like, what is the fundamental, what is the foundation, what is the, what is the prime mover of the human being able to survive? And I think it's attitude. You know, it's the attitude of like, laughing at yourself when you fall in a frozen river. It's like, yeah, this is kind of chilly, but whatever. <laughs> it's also pretty. 
It's being able to eat that dog food. Again, in the interest of full disclosure, I made a bet with my employees. This really cool pair of employees, Tyler and Keith. And I forgot what the bet was about, but I lost that bet. And what I had to do was live off of cat food for two weeks. And I can't say it was good. If you buy the premium stuff that's made to human standards as far as food, you know, that doesn't say much because hot dogs are made to human standards. You know, the duck actually tastes like duck and the quail actually tastes like quail. And so I did that. And in the midst of it, I can't say it was like the greatest thing I ever did as far as like, this is fun. I love eating cat food for two weeks. But I never felt better. And I studied this can of cat food. <laughs> and I, I know, but it was a bet and I had to honor my bet. I'm studying it. The first ingredient in the in the duck was duck. And this was meat. This was not like just duck gray matter. And then next it was peas. And then it had a list of nutritional supplements, which included taurine, which is an amino acid that, you know, is in Red Bull. And then I'm I'm thinking about a box of pizza. It's like it's perfectly acceptable for people to live off of pizza and seven up. You know, according to community standards, I'm not saying that the people that know anything about nutrition would think it's good, but it's perfectly acceptable for somebody to fill their body with garbage like that, yet I would be shunned in proper society if I was to admit that I ate cat food for two weeks. Um, a food product, let's think about it. If you're a hunter, if you're a survivalist, if you are a, a camper that is able to get your own food, you get a rabbit. Like, let's say I get a rabbit which I'm not going to admit to in, in any video. You eat the, the flesh, of course, but you also need to eat, like the brain, you need to eat the fatty liver, you need to eat the kidneys, you have to eat basically the whole animal to get nutrition. There's a thing called rabbit, um, rabbit starvation, that if you just ate the lean meat, you'd wind up starving because we need fat. And the best way to do that is eating the whole animal. If you get a, a ground squirrel or a small creature like that, which I've done, um, you eviscerate it, you take out, I'm not gonna eat the intestines, you know, and probably not the stomach. <clears throat> but then you like, you eat the whole thing beyond that. You, you can mash it up with a rock just to soften the bones up, but you've got the calcium, you've got the fat, all the goodness in the marrow, the, the fat in the brain, the fat in the liver. You know, really why, has that become gross? People eat um, goose liver pate. Okay, that's good stuff. I like that. Um, but most people think you just eat the lean meat or you eat vegetables, you know, if you're a this or that. Um, and so let me reel this back into the, the theory of survival is the foundation is being able to, one, be smart enough not to, which I just did, break through the ice and go into the water. Luckily, it wasn't that it wasn't that deep. Because little accidents like that can really screw you up. So you have to be present. You can't let like your your mind and thinking, oh, this is cold, and then you wind up doing something stupid or getting a stick in the eye. Because little little injuries uh, can really screw you up. So you gotta keep your, your wits about you. You have to get have a sense of humor. You have to definitely have a sense of humor. You can't feed into like the feeling of cold or hot or being hungry. I know what it's like to go without food for a week. I know what it's like to go without water for three days. Um, at the end of that three days I passed out but I went and functioned for three days without water. Um, it is what it is. You have to not allow yourself to think about the negatives. You have to find the positives and everything. You need to be able to eat stuff that like people aren't going to order at restaurants and appreciate it and eat the whole thing and not mind it. And so, <laughs> do I encourage you to eat cat food for two weeks? I don't know. At least when you're cooking spaghetti with your the deer you caught, you know, cut up the, the kidneys and put it in your spaghetti sauce. Been there, done that. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to share the water with you. So what I'm, I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up the camera and wind my way through here, hopefully not getting a stick in my eye. Pardon the seasick ride. you got to see this. This is so amazing. And I, I'm still recording. Okay, here we go, gang.
If nothing else, this video will be worth it when you see this. This is inspiring. This is beautiful. <laughs> I'd rather be out here, you know, chilly, cold fingers, um, than, than being in a stuffy little cubicle somewhere. I feel free! Kind of hoping that an eagle would fly by on cue, of course. Man, you can't pay for this. This is either got it or you don't. All righty, tidy. That's it. Thank you.